Well, what do you think? Are you ready to wrap up Candy Cane Lane? So we have a few more things to do and then we're done. <laughs> Hey everyone, Kristen Som here and we are finishing up Candy Cane Lane. So once you have your inner and outer borders done, then it's time to move on to the embellishments and adding the back to our pillow. So for our backing, we are going to use this red flower fabric that was in our kit. And then we are also going to do the fairy lights and all of the various buttons and uh, ribbons and little red buttons. We're going to do all of that together. So maybe turn on a good Hallmark movie, sit down and do your hand sewing for your buttons. I know some people do the machine for that. I don't. I'm a little too paranoid for that, I think. So one quick tip, uh, we'll go over each of the parts separately, but one quick tip is I heard that some people were having trouble getting the buttons out of the packaging and I haven't opened mine yet, you can see, but just a note to be careful. So what I've heard is some of the snowflakes, probably this large one has been breaking. So when you do open your package, make sure to do it in a gentle way, if at all possible. I heard some people were even soaking the 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 paper part of it um, to be able to get the button off so just a heads up to be careful trying to get that button out um, carefully and um, the other thing is for the fairy lights so there are various items on the market that you can use to poke the fairy hole lights um, fairy lights hole for the little eyelets I just use this all that's what I use and it works really well you just push it through the fairy light hole. And um, if you need to make it a little bigger, I mean, this thing really fills up the hole, so I don't think that you would have a problem. But you, it says in the directions that you could put this in there and twist it around a little bit. You just, the only thing that you really have to worry about is you don't want it um, cutting the satin stitching around the hole for your eyelet, that's it. Um, but this has worked really well for me. It's what I did on Twilight Boulevard. And um, I find it, it pretty easy to work with. So it's an all, A-W-L. Um, and that's it. If you haven't already, get your fabric kit or your own fabrics. Get ready for clear blue tiles because we're going to start that soon. I'm pretty excited. All right, so I am going to watch a Hallmark movie and sew on my buttons. I am doing that before I add on my backing. I just have the top done so far and that makes it easier for me to be able to um, get the buttons on and then we will work on the backing together and I'm going to add an add a label to mine. I haven't decided yet. I'm going to do a little research and decide uh, what design I want to use for my label but I've been doing that on most of my pillows and quilts and so I'm going to do that and I'll give you some tips on how I'm going to do that but that's totally optional. So anyway, let's get started in finishing our Candy Cane Lane project. And my shirt today is Yeti for Christmas. My grandson loves Yetis and we did a Yeti Christmas last year. So I think this is by Hoop Mama Designs. I'll add a link underneath the video.
Hey everyone, so I finished getting all of the fairy lights on and all of the buttons on. I want to give you a fair warning. There are 40 fairy lights and there are 40 holes, so you will use every single one. And a couple of them were a stretch to fit. Um, if I recall, from the red house to the, the tree was one point, and then I think from the tan house to the... Um, the wreath was another what uh, tough one. I don't recall exactly, but there were two that I didn't think were going to make it, and they did, and and it works. So you just stick with it. Um, one other thing is I started from the middle and worked my way out. Um, don't bother, because like I said, you will use every single one. So I started. I ended up. I redid it, and I started from the tree. I think one corner of the tree that where there's these three, and then. Um, what I ended up doing is just starting from the end. It made it a little bit easier for some reason. And then um, work your way over because you're going to use all of them anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, and the other thing is I added tape to the back. If you were with me during Twilight Boulevard, I did this for Twilight Boulevard as well with the fairy lights and it worked really well. It makes it so that the pillow moves in easily and it doesn't move any of those uh, wires for the fairy lights. So anyway, it, this part is done. The last step, which I'll work on tomorrow, is the uh, backing and a label. And everything else is done. And it's just, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. So fun. So anyway, we're almost there. And just, you know, I mentioned to watch a Hallmark movie or something while you sew on all the buttons. It takes time and the fairy lights. Like I said, I, I did them twice. I maneuvered them twice. Um, I think my husband and I watched four shows. If you know me, that's a lot of sitting down time that I don't normally do. <laughs> so um, be prepared. It does take a while. So I'm off to get a workout now on my bike trainer and I will pick up um, where I left off tomorrow with uh, finishing the, the backing. So all right, I can't wait to see yours. Okay, the next step is to uh, get our back fabric ready. And we are going to iron out all the seams and then you are going to trim it to the same width as your bench pillow. Mine was 16 and a half inches, but you need to check yours. And um, you can lay your, your bench pillow on top of it and trim, or you can measure out the size of your bench pillow and then um, cut your fabric that way. So once you do that, after you've got it down to the size of your, the width of your bench pillow, then we're going to cut this into three pieces. So we are going to do that by cutting two, one side, one side, and both of the sides are going to be 10 inches wide, 10 inches by the width. So 10 by 16 and a half is what mine is. So 10 inches on each side, and then you have the longer middle piece, and that's so that we can get to the fairy lights easily. So after you've got these trimmed down to the size that you need, you're going to fold down the, the edges on um, both of the middle ones and then just one of each of the sides so the long side of it you're going to fold it down a quarter inch and a quarter inch and then iron it and top stitch and we will um, sew these onto our bench pillow and then we're almost done there's one more thing I should clarify that it's 16 inches on the two 10 inch, 10 inch pieces. That's the side that you're going to fold down. Um, but on the big middle piece, it is the 16 and a half inch, not when I said long side, it's the edges, the 16 and a half inch sides that you fold in.
Hey everyone, so now that we have our backing fabric all um, sewn and cut and ready, it's time to make a label. So this is not a requirement. This is a uh, nice to have if you feel like doing a label. The way that I look at it is it's great for generations to come. After we're gone, they'll be able to see, oh, my grandma made this, you know? So I think it's pretty cool to add a label and it's really easy to do. So I am going to um, sew a design onto felt. That's what I usually do. I, I do it on felt and then I hand sew the felt onto the back piece. And that's just the easiest way that I can think of doing it. Um, and I'm going to do it on the larger piece rather than the two sides because the two sides I think will be pulled a little bit with the pillow. So I'm going to do it on, on the main piece. So the, what you want to do, I'm using So What Pro software and you start by going through your designs. So if you look through, I have a, an Excel spreadsheet and most of my designs, a bunch are not organized yet, but if you look through your designs, you can generally pick something that will work for your label. I mean, like you could do this little bear and write your name and date on the bear. Um, whatever works, whatever you think of um, a candy cane. So since it's candy cane lane, a candy cane would be a really good one. And Kimberbell has this candy cane. It's an applique that you would just write your name and date over on the side. And that would actually be really good. Um, but I don't recall where I got that one. I, I know it was a freebie from one of the classes that I took in one of the CDs but I don't recall which one. Um, the treat bag, I think that that was a dealer exclusive, but I'm not totally sure. But anyway, look through your designs and find something fun. The other option is a bunch of us did this Candy Cane Lane um, shirt and you have that design, so that would work. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and use that one just because it's easy for me to show you how to use that one. Um, and since so many of us already have it, this is by Designs by Juju. It was um, Word Art, Christmas Word Art 11, and I'll add a link in the video description underneath the video um, of where you can get the design if you didn't already get it. They've got a really good sale going on right now through the end of the month, by the way. So uh, like I said, I'm using Sew It Pro. So you would go to File Open and find the design that you have. So... Um, Mine is here. I'm going to do the second largest, the six by 10. For my photo or for my shirt, I did the eight by eight design, but I'm gonna do one just a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna choose this six by 10 candy cane lane and it automatically opened up to, I don't know what size this is. I'm hitting the shift button and my scroll on my mouse to be able to see full screen um, of my hoop. And I'm going to go ahead and change this hoop. Um, it looks like I've got a 6 by 10 and it's pretty tight. So I'm going to go ahead and change this. Excuse my dogs. Um, adjust hoop size. That's this little hoop button up here at the top. And I think I'll do an 8 by 12 for now. And then we can shrink it down. So I'm going to do an 8 by 12 just to have some little, a bit of room to move it around. All right, so I have the first five um, colors here and I wanna add my name. So I'm gonna go ahead and just move this up. I just click on it and move it out of the way for now. Doesn't really matter. All right, and then you would go to File Merge and choose a font that you have. Hopefully you've got some fonts. I have quite a few that I really like. Um, my favorite font, I have a lot that I really like, but my very favorite font I have a whole little folder of them here. Um, my favorite is called Maya. And I use that one a lot because I like it. It's thick. It looks nice um, for lettering. So Maya one font by Stitchtopia. And it comes in a few sizes. And I'm going to choose the one inch. There's also a half inch if, you're, if you have a smaller hoop. Um, but I'm going to do the one inch. And then you click on the the certain the first letter of your name so I'm gonna do a capital C and click open and it'll open that first one it brings it right to the middle I'm gonna move it out of the way and move it down here and I like to put them right on a line um, you can see the the grid here so I like to put it right on the line just so that it, I can see that it all lines up right 
And then you would, you can do it a couple of ways. You could sit there and go file merge every single letter. It's kind of a hassle. Or so what pro has this really great feature right here where it says icons. Um, this is insert lettering from info pane and you would click on that and I've already been playing around. So it's got some, um, loaded on here already, but so I've got my C. So my next is an R. All right. And see, I can just sit here and click all of them. I think you can even type, I, I don't know. But, um, so what I like to do is, um, I hit the, the left arrow button on my keyboard and that will move the letter over. You can see I can hit it, um, the right button. Sorry, I didn't click on it. So I can use my right and left arrow button to move it however I want it. And since it's cursive, I want it close so that it's all connected. Um, when you load it here, I'll do the S so you can see, it automatically does it just to the right a little bit. It's not actually connected because some people may want that. I want them connected. So I just move it over one little button, um, one little arrow button over and that connects it really well. So I'm just doing that on each of these. Um, so I've got most of my name here. Then, so for the second name, Kristen Som, I'm gonna move this over three or four spaces, whatever works, it doesn't matter too much. And then go back to the little letters. So, all right, and you saw I only had the O and the H, I didn't need to move over, they were already super close. The M I moved over just a bit. All right, so then you can click on that info pane again and it goes away and you can see all of your letters here. So what I wanna do is I wanna merge it since I've already got them lined up, it's lined up really well, I like how it is. I wanna merge these so that I can move them together without moving each one. So I would go to that edit, join threads, join all adjacent threads of same color, click okay, and now it's all one. And you can see I can move it over to the middle easily without them all getting out of order. So that one's done. So then you want to add a date. I do anyway, I want to add a date. And uh, this Maya doesn't have numbers. So then you would go, I have my fonts all in a Word spreadsheet. I'm kind of a spreadsheet gal, sorry. Um, and you can look through, so on mine, on my spreadsheet, what I did is I wrote and numbers so that I know which ones have numbers. And then I added a photo from each of their websites um, to show me at a quick glance which fonts that I have. And that just helps so you can see this is a nice font. So there's a lot that have numbers, but some don't. So this Ellie is a nice one with numbers. So I'm going to use Alexa. I like Alexa's numbers. Right there, you can see them there, um, nice. So I'm gonna use that. And then I already looked at this before this tutorial. And so I know that the one inch is actually pretty small and I'll show you how you can see that actually, but I'm gonna use the two inch. So I would go to file merge and then I need to find that font. So I keep all my fonts in one folder and I have them um, by name. And so I'm looking for Alexa. So I'm going to go up to the top here. Alexa font open and then go through the various numbers. So if I click on this is a one inch two, and you can see that the height of it is only 0 0.59. So a little bit more than a half inch. That's pretty small when my name is large. So I'd rather go with a little bit larger. So you scroll down to all these one inch, one inch, one inch, and then you're going to get to the two inch. So here's the two inches and you go through the letters. I think the numbers were first actually. Yeah, sorry. Two inch here and I want a number two. So Alexa, two inch, number two, and I'm going to click open and it's going to go right to the middle. And then I'm going to show you a little trick here. So if I, let's go ahead and move it down just so it's out of the way so you can see. So that's pretty big, it's larger than my name. I'd rather it's smaller, but I'm gonna fix that after. So for now, here's here's my numbers in that info pane again. So this info, it says icons at the top. I think that's what it says, it's pretty small. But right here next to this red A, you're gonna click that to get your info pane. And then you would just quickly, oops, that's too small. 
sorry, like I said, I was testing different sizes. So um, you can click delete on your keyboard and that goes away and then just find where you've got the bigger ones here to zero. So now you see that zero was after the two and so now our next zero is further away. So I'm gonna have to move that over using my little left arrow button on my keyboard or you can just grab it and move it, but this keeps them all lined up so it's pretty easy. All right, and then 2021, that one is a little close, so I'm gonna move that one back a bit. All right, so then we have, we can click that icon button and it goes away again, and we have seven, eight, nine, ten 10 is our numbers. So we're gonna go ahead and merge those again, go to edit, join threads, join all adjacent threads, and then we have it right there. So one thing that I wanna do, as I mentioned, it the numbers are bigger than my name and I'd rather it looks a little bit more uniform. So I can click on that one item. It's really important that you click on the item that you're gonna work with. So mine is this number seven and it's all in black and I'm going to go ahead and change it. So up here, this little button that has um, like blue corners, all the blue corners, you click on that. There's probably the specific names to these, but that's a resize button. And so since, like I said, I've only got this one thing clicked on, it's only gonna resize that. So that's really nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and change it to 80%. You can mess around with numbers and see what works, but to me that works pretty well. So that's a good size, I'm not too picky. So I'm gonna move this up to where I want it. I want it right under my name and I want it centered. See the little black dots on the, um, on each of the corners and the sides. So I wanna line that up with the center of my hoop, right there. And then the same thing with my name. I think we, oh, we didn't already line it up. So let's line that up too. It, did I not move it up? Sorry, I just centered it. Okay, so I want this lined up just under my name, centered, and then this centered, it's already centered. So like that, but then I want this candy cane. I don't know if I can do. So if I click on each of these and click, yep, um, control, then I can click these specific because now they're kind of lumped together. So you want to make sure to get what you want to move all grouped together. And then you can move this down. The other way is you could have just moved the name up. Either way works. So I just want this centered and right above my name. Okay, so I like that. So now what I want to do is I want to click all of it. So I'm just clicking somewhere above it and dragging all of it. And then I have all of these selected. The other way is you could hit that control button and click on each of these, but this was quick and easy. And we want to center it. So remember we have these centered line, uh, little dots in the middle horizontally and vertically. And so we're just going to move that to the center. There we go. Oops, over a little bit. All right, and then we're set, we've got it centered and it doesn't really matter because we're not taking up the whole hoop, but we also could change to a smaller hoop. We could change to an eight by eight hoop at this point, I think. Not sure about that because the eight inch hoop is 7.87, I think. So it's a little bit big for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep with this, um, I don't need an eight by 12, I could do a seven by 12, safe on the stabilizer a little bit, it actually wouldn't, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and change it just to show you how. So, sorry, I clicked too fast. Um, this adjust hoop size, the one with the hoops on it, and then go to this one, seven by 12. All right, and then I think it keeps it centered, let's see. Yep, we're still centered. And now we can use a seven by 12 hoop. And don't forget, we always do a file save as. So file save as, and then I am going to say label. And I'm just clicking after the already words that are there and clicking label. And then I have saved it and I can move it to my USB drive and bring it to the, um, the embroidery machine and stitch this out. And like I said, you can use pretty much any design. You could use a design that's already in this specific project, like the lighthouse or the cute tree. The tree would be really cute, but those are a lot of work, a lot of steps. This is simple. 
Um, so whatever works for you, a simple little applique that you can put your name on top of it, um, or this one that we already have. Since we've already got this, I think this is pretty easy for most people. So that's how you do it. So we're going to stitch out a label. I'm going to do it on felt. You can do it on whatever you want and then get it onto your back fabric before we put piece it all together. And that's it. Well, guess what? <laughs> it's done! <laughs> I'm really excited. This one took a long time, more longer than I expected, obviously because of um, family commitments, but this is just beautiful. It's so beautiful. Um, the lights, the, all the embellishments, the little um, buttons and the the shimmery snow it's just gorgeous and the patchwork I love the patchwork so it's done and I'm very excited it's done I made a cute little label sorry my stretched anyway so it's done and I can't wait to see yours so here's the deal I'm gonna give you a few days to finish and then I'm gonna pull all those photos so I want you to keep finishing your pillow and um, post in the group and I will pull those photos of your completed pillow or wherever you are with it if you're just starting that's fine too and I'm gonna make one more video and I'm gonna use that one to add on to the end when I do all the sections for for the people that haven't started yet 
and so that way then your completed pillow will be in the video as well. So finish up your pillow and get your pictures posted and share them in the Kristen Creates group. And I look forward to seeing them. Good job, everybody. This was fun.